One of the things I love most about Australia is just how multicultural it is. It's full of beautiful people from all around the world that have chosen to make this country their home. I'd hazard a guess to say that most people in Australia, the vast majority of Australians, have a parent or at least a grandparent who was born overseas and migrated here at some point. And I, of course, am no exception. My pretty mama here was born in Poland. I was born in Poland and um, my parents moved to Nigeria, to Lagos, when I was a little girl. Uh, we lived there till I was about seven years old and then we migrated to Australia. Um, first in Melbourne, where we were in an immigrants hostel for about a month or so, and then my father got a job in Wollongong, so we moved to Wollongong, and then eventually found our way to Sydney. And um, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. My parents made a huge sacrifice to come from their country, where all their family is, to Australia, and I'm eternally grateful. You wouldn't have met this handsome no, no. boy. Yeah. No, no definitely not. Poland to Australia. Can't, to Australia. Can't get much further away. So today, in the spirit of multiculturalism, we're mixing it up a bit. We're doing something a bit different. We are currently en route to a suburb of Sydney called Cabramatta, which is a vibrant hub of Vietnamese culture and, of course, food. Guys, yummy, yummy, love we, Vietnamese. We are doing Woo. a Vietnamese food tour today. You guys have been requesting us to do this video for a really long time. Ah, yeah, so Vietnamese good. Food. You guys have been to Vietnam before, right? Yep. Just recently, just, just in recently. March. Yeah. March last year, actually, which seems yep. like a lifetime. Ago. Seems like a lot. That was March. That was March. But we just wow. had the best time. The food people, the country, the history. History, yeah. Oh, just, it's so easy to get immersed in, in a culture and food is such the a food. great way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, not gonna lie, I've been to Vietnam more than once. I've been maybe like four times now. It's a very easy trip from China, um, easy to get there. The flights are usually really cheap and it's just such a pleasure to go there and just spend some time eating. I absolutely love the food of Vietnam. So um, this is probably the closest we're coming to traveling in the last six months, going to Cabramatta. Like it's a, it's it's very Vietnamese feeling there. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited about it. I'm excited too. It really is. It's it's. It has a real vibe of Vietnam, except less crowded, less humid. <laughs> and the traffic is just a touch more orderly. And less chance of being run over yeah. by an electric scooter or a moped. <laughs> Oh but I learned that when you're crossing a road in Vietnam, you just walk with confidence across the road and people will just go around you. I was actually so surprised. Okay, welcome to the tutorial, how to cross roads with Amy in Vietnam. So, you start crossing, hopefully there's no one coming, you walk slow, and then you just hope to God you don't die. Look confident, look the drivers dead in the eye like, I'm going to walk in front of you whether you like it or not, and they'll, they'll swerve past you. I think that's great. Look confident, <laughs> die proud. <Yeah>. <laughs> We are here in Cabramatta and I figure we're here about like what, it's 11 now? How about we go grab a coffee first? Oh, yeah. coffee sounds wonderful. Yes, love me some Vietnamese Delicious. coffee. So, I hear that you have really good Vietnamese coffee here. Yes, we do. Can we please have three? All oh, right, yes. Uh, you, what size would you like for that? So that'll be two hot Vietnamese coffees. Yeah. One small one large yeah. and then one cold Vietnamese coffee with no condensed milk. Just some tea. Oh. So that's how Vietnamese people they normally have a coffee with. Like they have a coffee with a sip of tea. Yeah. Yes, and they have the two hot coffee. Thank you. You have the condensed milk at the bottom so you have to start first before you start. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think it's time to let you guys in on a little secret that I've been keeping to myself for a while. Dun, um, dun, dun. I'm actually lactose intolerant, so just when you thought I couldn't get any more Asian on the inside, there you go. So unfortunately, I can't enjoy the Vietnamese coffee as it was intended to be enjoyed with the condensed milk. It's one of the features of Vietnamese coffee. If you mix it, the condensed milk's down the bottom. See? Oh, okay, so you mix it and it gets so a bit sweeter. So you mix sweeter. it in and it gets sweeter. 
Um, and it's actually kind of funny how the condensed milk added to Vietnamese coffee came about, or even coffee in general in Vietnam. It was Coffee was brought to Vietnam by the French in the 1800s when Vietnam was a part of French Indochina, a colony of France. And the French took advantage of the Vietnamese climate to create these massive coffee plantations. And actually today, Vietnam is the second largest producer of coffee in the world. But yeah, despite the huge coffee crops, Vietnam was never really home to a huge milk drinking culture. And it was kind of hard for, you know, the dairy to come in on the ships and stay, you know, what's the word? Fresh. So along comes condensed milk in a can that has a very long shelf life and it saves the day. And that's why they use condensed milk in Vietnamese coffee and it just gives it that lovely sweetness which I have substituted today with a whole lot of sugar in this uh, coffee with no condensed milk. Mm. You want to lick the, the it's, like, it's like a It's like yeah. a dessert for me. It's sweet and it's yeah. strong. It's really yeah. a strong here. Oh like I really have to like drink it. this in the morning. If I'm going to have a Vietnamese coffee it must be in the morning because otherwise I will not sleep. The, day. Yeah. the thing I really like, I don't know if you guys remember this when you're in Vietnam, but I really love the culture, the cafe culture, which kind of encourages you to sit for a while, chill out, no rush, which I really appreciated because for me, if I was to try and down this in three or four sips, yeah, no sleep for me, but just sit there over the course of a couple of hours and get your way through your coffee. It's a really nice little yeah. part like, of Vietnam I like. It's like how they bring out the, the tea, yeah. so you can have your tea with your coffee. But this is not the only Vietnamese coffee that we tried, is it? No. In, in Hoi An, not Hoi An, um, in Hanoi. Um, during, I think during the war, or the Vietnam War, the Vietnam war there was, they couldn't get milk. And this man came up with a, a way to make coffee with an egg yolk. Like egg? Egg. With egg. It's a very secret. It's a very, very secret. secret family recipe using egg yolk to and give it the similar the, creaminess and to having it. We remember milk. we went down, the, the guide took us down this dark alleyway, <laughs> and suddenly we went into this coffee house, and it was packed. And we ordered the coffee, and it's great. It's, yeah. I mean, it's crowded for a reason. The coffee is so good. Egg coffee. Sounds weird. Egg Hanoi, with coffee. Hanoi so it's actually egg. egg. It's egg. egg in it. So you could have a tea if there's no milk in it. Yes. <laughs> you guys have both finished your coffees. Um, I'm not as good with the caffeine. I'm, I usually drink tea, so I'm going to take a little bit longer on mine, but... Are you going to take two hours? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It's like 20 minutes later, I've made my parents wait for me to finish this coffee off. But I think it's time for us to go check out our first food option for the day. Yay! Any guesses of what we're going to be getting? Bami! Bami! So we are here at Kim Tan Company Hot Bread um, and in my research online, I found that this is one of the places to get banh mi here in Sydney in Cabramatta. What is your favorite type of banh mi? Which one do you like the most? I like all. <laughs> you know, every day we eat, every day we know it. I remember, but yet I don't know every day we see every day, but I still eat every day. Yeah, yummy. I think when it comes to Vietnamese food, there's nothing really more iconic than a banh mi. We've gotten two here. One is chicken, one is pork. And I've got, gotten her to cut it into three bits so that we can each enjoy one section of each. First things first, get some hand sanitizer on there. So fun fact, banh mi, the word banh mi, literally translates to bread. And when it comes to bread, the Vietnamese do it really, really well. It's crusty on the outside, soft on the inside. It's so light and just really, really tasty. And of course, the reason why Vietnamese do baguettes and bread so well is because, of course, it used to be a colony of France. I'm gonna try the chicken one first. Okay, let's try, let's let's try, try the chicken, chicken first. How about you get this big one? Oh, but it looks so juicy oh, and delicious. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh yummy. Mm. Oh, yummy. Mm. Mm. Well, that bread's great. Mm. Mm. That chicken is so juicy. And I love how you've got all the pickled vegetables in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a pickled, pickled mm, flavour in it. Mm -hmm. the, the tangy mm -hmm. flavour of Vietnamese cooking. I love it. <clears throat> oh. 
Do you put chili on this? Yes, I do. Did you find it? Bro? Oh, we yeah, got jelly. for the chili on mine. I was like, where's my chili? Maybe you got the jelly. I got, I got my chili. chili. <laughs> oh. So fresh and light and delicious. One of my favorite foods from Vietnam. Delicious. And one of the easiest things to just pick up and mm. eat while you're walking down the street. And now we are going to try the pork one, which is filled with a selection of Vietnamese cold meats. So you can see there, one and two. And this one has pate on it as well. Mm. Mm, it's got oh, another one of those interesting things, like you don't expect to be walking down the streets of Vietnam and be offered pate with your mm. sandwich. Mm. Like, <laughs> it's... No, it's so French. Yeah. yeah. It's literally French. It I is, know. yeah. Crunch, soft, meat, veggies, herbs, coriander, chili. Pretty good sandwich, huh? Really good sandwich. Oh. Tick of approval. Another chili. <laughs> but I am getting used to it. If I had a chili like that before, you'd be, you'd, you'd be, be immediately pooping. Mm. So most people at this stage will have probably heard of pho, the very famous Vietnamese soup, rice noodle soup, um, but we eat that on a very regular basis, most people know about it, so I thought that for this video we could try something that's a little bit same same but different, so today we are at Dong Ba restaurant here in Cabrabada, and they specialise in a rice noodle soup called Ban Bo Hue, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but it's so delicious, let's order. Um, yeah, we're ready to order. Should we get two or three? Three? I think they're very large. Oh, okay, maybe we get two. Let me get two. Can we get two bundle Okay, the famous one. Yes. The famous one. <laughs> yes, please. Any drink? Um, avocado, three uh, color. What's a good Vietnamese drink? Uh, this one, avocado. This one's three color. Three color? Oh, yeah. I might get one of those. Yeah. So, what drink did you order, Dad? I just I asked her for a Vietnamese drink and she said it was an avocado milkshake. And she goes, oh, no, this one. The three. 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 Color. Three's colors. Beans? I don't know. Beans, it's the avocado. It's a very fancy looking oh, drink. Very fancy looking drink. So the dish in front of us here is Phan Bo Hue and like pho, it's also a Vietnamese rice noodle soup and that's pretty much where the similarities end. Um, whereas pho has a more mild, fragrant kind of flavour and it's kind of like Vietnam's answer to the beloved chicken noodle soup. This is a very different flavour profile. It is intense, it is a flavour hit. It's a spicy broth, it's very umami and that's thanks to the shrimp paste inside which is one of the key ingredients. Mm. So that broth is just so, mm, so flavorful. A real like lemongrassy hit as well. It's got a little bit of a chili kick, but mm. just to ride now. Mm. I must be getting more used to chili or things of beef they're putting less chili in. But I'm, I'm getting used to it. Yeah, I think you are. Really nice. I I I, I do prefer a fur. Oh really? Yeah. I, and mum likes it, so I, I do prefer fur. I don't want this to get too much into like a comparison thing, fur versus bambokwe. I think it comes just down to a personal preference um, and probably your mood on the day. I think there are definitely some days that I'd be like, yeah, I feel like something a bit milder, let's go for a fur. Um, and there are some days that I'm definitely like, yeah, I want something very flavorful, that chili kick and I'd go for this, so both lovely. But if you're maybe looking for an alternative to pho, um, try out a bun bo hue, it's uh, really delicious. Jelly in my drink. That's gotta be the most interesting drink I've ever seen. It's like a bubble tea with, with it's more of a milkshake than a bubble tea. It's yeah. like a coconut. One of the other things I really love about Cabramada are these beautiful fruit shops everywhere selling these beautiful exotic fruits from Vietnam and all around Southeast Asia. So what have we got here? <laughs> Look, it's fair to say the smell of durian is always in the air here at Cabramada. We came across this juice and smoothie shop which proudly displayed before and after photos of the boss's weight loss journey after he started drinking green juices. Dad, of course, was immediately intrigued. I need that. So it helps you lose weight. <laughs> it cleans the system. It's like a service of the car. Oh. 
Clean, clean, clean. 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 Oh, let's get one. I want one. So, which one would you recommend? Uh, green juice. Yes, yes, that one. The oh, green juice. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Or the healthy. Is that the healthy one? Should we get one? Yeah, why not? All right, let's get one. Yes. Do we put any of this fun things in the healthy one? Oh. My stomach was that big. Okay. Uh, bigger than yours. Okay. But then, <laughs> the that you, get, you, you, drink, you lose that, that's 10 kilos off yeah. your stomach. And I then that's it. 10 kilos. Easy. Easy. Okay. Do it or not? I'm drinking. I'll try it. The doctors around here. Yeah. This is really interesting. It tastes green. Yeah. No additive. It does taste great. So I've seen here they also have a durian avocado shake, which is just too good to pass up. Like while in Cabramatta, I need to at least have a little bit of durian. You, 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 durian. you eat durian? Not really. Very strong. So what? what so we put very less durian. Okay. And more avocado. Okay. All right. Durian yes. and avocado. So, wow. Durian avocado. Doesn't smell too bad there. <laughs> oh, you can taste it? Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Some I think it's because it's with the avocado. Yeah, it's, avocado. Um, and they didn't put much in. No, so it's actually okay. You definitely can That's taste the nice. durian. Though. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely taste durian, but it's not it's not over the top. If you were keen to yes. try durian, mm. yeah. you had to try That's durian, that would be the way to yeah. introduce you, because it's milder. I can, I can taste the durian, for sure. Taste. But then it goes away. It's actually... No, it's... That's a quite it's pleasant. pleasant. And quite pleasant. Yeah, I like the avocado in that as well. That. I, like, I would recommend it. I like this. And look, it's already working. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Um, that's going to end our little Cabramatta tour for today. Um, I really enjoyed this. I had a really good time. It actually felt like we were traveling yeah, a little bit. It didn't feel like a bit of travel. It feels like, I, it feels like I'm kind of in Vietnam at the moment. Thank you so much for joining me, Mum and Dad. Thank you for having us. Um, we will join you next week with another food adventure, yeah. um, whatever well, that may be. Where should we go? I don't know. We will see. It's going to be a secret. Very exciting. <laughs> Not a secret. I just haven't decided. Okay. But <laughs> we'll know when we know. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yes, Woo. you heard the man. Okay.